In this video, we'll see how to carry out the two-sample t-interval on the ti. The instructions for the 83 and the 84 are the same for this test. So we have this example. An instructor decided to run two slight variations of the same exam. She randomly gave some of the students version A and the rest version B. Using the summary statistics below, construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference in average scores on the exam between the two versions. So here, because we have averages, and because we have two groups, they're not paired, we have two separate groups, we're going to do a two-sample t-interval. So first, let's verify conditions. We have that um, n, let's call it sub a, is equal to 30. And this is greater than or equal to 30. n sub b is almost 30, so we could consider that okay. Or we could also note that here we have sample b. If we look at the mean and the standard deviation and also the min and the max, we can see the mean falls somewhat in the middle and that there aren't really outliers. So we can say that sample B is approximately symmetric, no outliers, therefore it's reasonable to assume the population is normal. Also for the two-sample t-test or confidence interval, you need two independent random samples or two randomly allocated treatments. In this case here, we have randomly allocated treatments because some of the students were randomly assigned version A and the rest version B. So now we can construct our interval. We're going to do the point estimate, which in this case is going to be a difference, plus or minus T star, and then the SE of the estimate. The SE is the more challenging part, but remember, uh, you don't have to memorize the SE formula. Always go to the formula sheet here. And we'll see that if we have a difference of sample means, which is what we have, then the standard deviation or the standard error structure looks like this. So we'll be substituting in S, our sample standard deviation here. So we're going to have S sub A squared over N sub A, etc. So here, our difference is going to be the mean of A minus the mean of B. So that's just going to be 79.4 minus 74.1. T star we'll have to determine later. Here we're going to plug in S, the first S, which is 14. And remember it was raised to the 2 squared. And this is going to be over its corresponding N. And then this is going to be the standard deviation of the second one, in this case B, which is 20 squared. And then that's going to be over its corresponding N of 27. So we're just missing a T star now. So now we'll have to use the calculator to evaluate the interval and also to find the degrees of freedom. Here there is not really a simple formula for the degrees of freedom when there's a two sample T interval. So we'll just use the calculator. So we'll go to stat, test, and we'll do two samp T int. So we'll go to stat, over to tests, and scroll down to 2 samp t and hit enter. And here we can enter the data if we have it. If we had all the data, we could enter it into list L1 and L2 ahead of time. Leave the frequency 1. But in this case, we have the summary stats. So we'll go hit the right arrow over to stats and hit enter. And now you can enter in the summary stats. So x bar 1 is we're using A, so that's 79.4, and its standard deviation is 14, and its N is 30. X bar 2, corresponding to the B version, is 74.1. Its standard deviation is 20, and its N is 27. Confidence level, we want 95%, so we'll leave this as 0.95. Always leave the pooled as no. We're not going to be pulling the standard deviations and then do calculate and hit enter. And here we get our interval. So in this case we get negative 4.0 to 14.6. And notice it also gives us our degrees of freedom so we can record that. So that's about 46 degrees of freedom. Like we said there's um, no great way of calculating the degrees of freedom without the calculator. So now 
we're just missing t star. Now that we found the degrees of freedom from the calculator, we can pull up the t table and find t star. So 46 degrees of freedom, we want 95% confidence. Since 46 is not on the table, we'll round down and look at row 40, and that's 2.021. 2.021. So here we'll substitute in 2.021 and now our confidence interval is complete. So now we can interpret our interval. So we have this confidence interval here. We have to remember what order we did the difference in. We did A minus B and that we can do the order either way but which one we choose affects the interpretation. So if we're doing A minus B and if this is negative 4, that means that which one was harder? Well, let's think about this. If the difference is negative, that means that this number is smaller, which means that A is harder because it had the lower average. So for our interpretation, we can say we are 95% confident that on average, exam A is four points harder to 14.6 points easier. Now, if this entire interval were negative, then we would have evidence that what? Well, if the entire interval were negative, we're saying B is bigger than A, so we're saying that A is a smaller number, we're saying A is harder. So if the entire interval is negative, we have evidence that A is harder. If the entire interval is positive, we have evidence that B is harder. So in this case, what's our conclusion? Well, it spans negative and positive. So because zero is included, as well as positive and negatives, we don't really have evidence that either test was harder. So we can say that because zero is included in the interval, we have no evidence that either exam was harder on average. That's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.